morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Going to do another video. This is kind of continuation of the last one I did with mouse on lunging. And I will put the link for that one in the description. And what we're doing is we're getting them ready to go to work after they've been off all winter. And Mouse is one of those horses that he's just, he's, he's an old broke horse. He's about 10 years old, very experienced, very uh, independent minded and kind of lazy. And so he, he's been worked as a, one of the student horses for two years. And so he's learned that he can just turn his brain off. And, but I'm riding him this year and that's not acceptable to me. So I'm reminding him what we're doing at this time is I'm reminding him that he knows how things are supposed to work. After I did that last video, Shelby took him out a couple days ago and she said he was not good. I mean, he don't, he don't buck or do anything like that, but he just turned his brain off. He wouldn't neck rain. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to listen. He just turned his brain off. So we're going to continue to work him today. And like I talked about before, we're going, we're working his mind. Everything, everything is mind and attitude. Now I'm going to throw a couple of little things unrelated in here. Um, a lot of times when people get their horses in from the winter, spring's coming on, they start shedding, they start grooming them. And uh, I just want just a couple of little free tidbits on that, on grooming. Uh, there's a couple of things that a lot of people do. I used to do, and I don't do anymore. And I don't recommend that you do it. All right. If you, if your horse sheds out and you want to kind of trim these and clean these up, that's fine. But a lot of people, they'll shave these little hairs here on the, on the muzzle. Okay. I don't do that anymore. I did years ago, but I don't anymore. And I don't recommend, I don't recommend it. All right. This is a blind spot for your horse. He can't see down here. And because horses obviously don't have fingers, they're very tactile with their nose. And these are like little, little antennae that help them uh, explore and, uh, and find things and figure things out. And so I leave these, okay? You can clean this, but I, I never shave the muzzle and I don't, I don't think it ought to be done. The other thing I don't do is I never shave out the inside of the ears. Now, what I will do when I start cleaning him up, like this old man ear hair here, flush with the outside of the ear, I might trim that just and trim this down here, but I don't go in the ear. Oh, son. And I, like I'll trim this here where it comes out, but what's in the ear, I leave it. That's protection. That's protection from the flies, from the gnats, um, from excessive noise, from being out riding in high wind. Um, that's there for a purpose and we should never be so concerned about style that style trumps the well-being of the horse okay and so anyhow just a little little something there so what i'm gonna i'm gonna ride him today but before i do i'm gonna work him on the ground now there we go that's better than he did the other day already he knows and so he's moving that means he's paying attention to my sight signal. So we're just going to keep doing this in the days as we go. And it's just more and more to make it concrete in his mind that he has to listen for my signal and then follow my signal. And if you think about it, that's all neck reining is. That's what stopping is. That's what backing up is. It's your horse knowing what the signals are and then being sensitive to listen for those signals and then follow those signals with the least amount of communication. That's all it is. And you get a broke horse and you know your horse is broke and they just get dull and they get heavy and they get sloppy. It's just them not listening to communication. And so you gotta go back and remind them of what their job is. Whoop. All right. You got to remind them of, you know, their responsibility. That's all. Now, I talked in the last video. No, give me that nose. 
about people who just want to trot and lope their horses all the time. And I'm trotting him right now because he's lazy. And so I'm letting him know from the ground that his responsibility is to move out however much I... Whoa. Now you saw him blow past me there. He knew the signal. I saw in his ears and his eyes. He knew what I wanted him to do. But to change directions is physically more complex and physically more demanding than just keep moving at a trot. So he's like, no, I don't want to do that. There we go. There we go. Better get around there. Come on. He don't like to turn back to his left as much as he does to his right. And I'm not being, I'm not demanding I mean, he ain't a reigning horse, okay? And I'm not asking him to be. But I am asking him to look for my signal, to look for it, and then to respond to it. So I'm asking. Now, he don't like to go back to his left. There we go, that's better. So now we're gonna break it down into these half circles. Come on. Stand there, tell me no. Adjust my body posture. And I'm going to relax so he relaxes. He kind of got swatted there because he told me, no, I don't want to. Well, at the same time, when he's out there and I tell him to do something, he says, no, I don't want to. And I got to swat him a little bit. I don't want his reaction to be, well, I'll jump up and take off then. It's like none of that's necessary. Just listen to me. We'll make it as calm as you let me. Yeah, you don't like to go back in that direction while he charges. That's actually okay. That's actually I don't want to. That's all right. He'll get, he'll get tired of that nonsense in a little bit, and then he'll say, you know, life can be as easy as I make it. I'm not making him jump and Pick up, there's his licking his lips. That's a good sign. I'm not making him jump up like that. So he's not being real calm and willing, responsive here. So when he's up to a trot like that, which I don't really want him to do that, that's him saying, yeah. I'll let him decide that's just too much work. It's actually less work to just quietly do what Dwayne's asking me to do. Because Dwayne ain't asking me to do anything overly difficult or complicated. And he'll figure it out. See him blow by there? That's just pure laziness. That's just pure laziness. That's, that's saying I don't want to do the more complex physical thing. So you see how he's up to speed here? I'm not doing it, he's doing it. He's rebelling. He's saying, I'll go so hard, maybe I can just charge through that direction change. See that? None of this is necessary. All of this is his doing. None of this is my doing. All I'm asking to do is walk and change direction. Getting difficult, and when he gets tired, he'll get this out of his system, and then he'll be like, "Make it easier." see if I can if I can get him to calm his pace down with my body posture so I just bring my energy down bring my energy down see if he'll bring his energy down with mine 
that's part of him being in tune to me. See there? See there? All that for nothing. He didn't accomplish anything. There he's licking his lips. I mean, he's thinking. by me. He knows all this. This isn't new. He ain't scared. He's like, there you go. Now he stopped, walked, and made his made his adjustment. There we go. Still hanging on my hand, kind of heavy. Still resistant, but not like he was. That nose, buddy. There it is, much better. Whoa. Now, when he had that, um, when he had that attitude, when he had that tendency to resist what he was being told, it wouldn't do any good for me to put him under saddle, for me to get in the saddle and then ride him, because his brain wasn't right, his attitude wasn't right. Everything from the ground, all your groundwork translates to the saddle. If you can't do it on the ground. You can't do it in the saddle, all right? Um, so make sure you got the attitude you want on the ground before you go to the saddle. We're going to drop that. Now, let's talk about we want our horses to be respectful, but we don't want to take the time to be respectful, all right? Now, you notice... We'll talk about this here in a second. You notice I'm using just a snaffle bit, okay? Just a snaffle bit. Somebody else put that up last time. Now to put the bit in your horse's mouth, got all this stuff in the way. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put my thumb here on the inside of this left ring. And I'm going to put my cussing finger on the inside of the right <laughs> ring, all right, to hold them open. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to put that right there. And I'm going to put my thumb in there, and as he opens his mouth, I'm going to just gently slide that up in there. Respectfully, not banging against his teeth, not jamming on his gums, all right? If, if I want my horses to be respectful... They're only going to be respectful if I teach them respect. And the only way I'm going to teach them respect is if I'm respectful to them. All right. If you have a disrespectful horse in the head stall, it's because they've been taught disrespect from a person. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Your throat latch. Your throat latch is only to keep the head stall from coming off their head. All right, that's all it does. And so you don't want that tight. You want it loose. You want to be able to get two or even three fingers in there. All right? Because when you start asking him to tip his nose in, if he comes in and pinches that up in there, he's going to be reluctant to do it. Also, with a snaffle bit, your curb strap, it only serves, it does, there's no curb action because there's no shanks. So all that does is keep the bit from pulling all the way through their mouth if you get on a difficult horse that gapes their mouth and refuses to give. That's all that does, okay?
Now again, I know I've said this 20 times now and you're getting tired of hearing it. But the things that you look for, the things you're trying to accomplish in a young, inexperienced horse, or an unbroke horse, are not the same things that you're dealing with with every horse. And since this is a wrangler school, all right, and we did start out to teach wrangling to wranglers, and you show up at a ranch, you ride whatever horse they give you. And what you have is you have a lot of bored, dead dude horses. And this is something that you'll find that, uh, that you'll have to deal with. All right, horses like that. Oh man. If I didn't have so much dignity, I'd start using a mounting block. <laughs> All right, now he's got, he's turned off the bit lately. He's gotten really, and he's fully neck rein broke, all right? But now, I went back to the snaffle. Now, let me, let me say here that a snaffle bit, it does not matter what the mouth looks like. It can be solid, it can be broken, it can have a dog bone in the middle, all right? None of that matters. A snaffle bit, by definition, is any bit that has no shanks, where the reins are directly connected to the sides, to the rings up here, all right? So an Argentina snaffle is not a snaffle bit, all right? So anyhow, when you have a horse and you're training a horse, getting them back, you want to go back to the snaffle bit. Now, most people make the mistake, you get a horse like him that's like just turns it off, and they'll get a a, a more severe shank bit they'll get a corrector bit they'll get you know something with shank so they got some leverage that's the wrong thing to do <coughs> because he's already depending on mechanical coercion to get him to do what you want him to do he's like make me that's where he's at and all a shank bit will do is reinforce that it's like okay physically i'll make you but what we're doing is we're getting back to him. And I'm saying, listen to me. Okay? So you got to go back. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn him to the right. Now, this horse, he knows neck rein and he knows all that. All right? But I'm going to turn him to the right. And I'm going to tell you in advance what he's going to do. Okay? I'm going to lay the rein on his neck and he's just going to sit there. Or he's going to be, uh... And so it's going to be a three-point thing. I'm going to look. I'm going to lay the rein on his neck, and when he's sluggish, I'm going to reach down with his direct rein, and I'm going to bump him, all right? So it's just a reminder that, hey, wake up and pay attention to what I'm doing and listen to me, okay? So I'm going to look where I'm going. I'm going to lay the rein on his neck, and he started, but he was just, like, slow and sluggish. So I'm like, pay attention to me, all right? And I'm going to come across, lay the rein on his neck, Give him a little bump, just to make him realize and remember. Well, there's a, he came a little bit more around, a little more alive right there. I'm gonna come back on this other side. I'm gonna turn into the panel. So I'm gonna look first, I'm gonna lay the rein, and I'm gonna bump. He just completely said, no, I think I'll just keep walking. So I'm like, you be as light or as hard as you want, and I'll respond accordingly. So I'm going to look, lay the rein. There, that's better. All right. So now this isn't teaching him anything. This is just reminding him. All right, I'm going to look. I'm going to lay the rein. Give him a little bump there. It's like, come around. Come around. I'm going to wake him up. He's a little sluggish. Turn him back. Come in there. I should have had a hold of that rein and I didn't. He's like, that's too much work. Turn back at speed. Come back here, turn back, give him a bump. He's like, okay. All right, I remember. Come back around this way. <coughs> turn him back. Give him a bump. Just bumps. Just reminding him. Whoa. You see how his nose is out there backing up? He knows better than that. 
but we'll just work on one thing at a time. But he needs to be sensitive to that bit, and he's not. So I'm going to come in here. I want you to notice my legs are still, and I'm going to do just a little bit of pressure. Now, when he tipped his nose, but he didn't move his feet, that's what I want. He's like, I need to get off, so I'm going to rock a little bit. So it, No. He started taking a step back, so I came in with my legs. Hands without the legs is his nose without his feet. Come off of that. No. There we go. He remembers. And until he gets back light again, doing this in the snaffle bit, we'll not put him back in a western bit. Okay. You know my feet are still. So his feet have to be still. That's how he separates this out. He came in there for a little bit, then he tried to take it back from me. So I'm just going to hold it. No. He moved his feet, so I'll move my feet. All right. So what he's doing, so you understand what he's doing, because remember, he's lazy. Okay? He's lazy. So the easiest thing for him to do is to move his feet, he thinks, in a particular lateral direction. All right, he'd rather do that than tip his nose in. So this is pressure. He's like, I need to get off that pressure, but I don't really want to tip my nose in. I don't really want to. See, I don't know if you can see it. He's rocking back. His weight's on his hind end. He's think. So he's like, if I move my feet to get off the pressure, I won't have to tip my nose. But that, that doesn't get him anywhere. Give me your nose. So I can tell he's kind of turning his brain off. He's not sitting there thinking about what do I need to do? Because he'll move his head sideways and then he'll move it a little bit the other side way. There we go. And then he'll move his feet. And he's like, I've got away with this for so long. I don't want to go back to doing it again. But what this is, this reminds him that he has to pay attention to that bit. And the bit means something. And so he has to follow that bit according to what it actually means. So now he's tugging on my hands there. All right. Now I'm going to ask him to give me his nose to the right. My feet are still. So I don't want his feet to move. All right. Now, again, I'm not teaching him anything new. I'm reminding him that this is, this is the program, which he is ignored for two years now see he move his feet there he don't want to rock his nose to the left there we go all right so now we're going to add something to it i'm going to tip his nose i mean i'm gonna, no i'm not i'm going to hold his head i'm going to let him keep his head straight i'm going to open up this left leg and i'm going to come in with my right leg but see he's going to move forward he knows Got to remind him, let him sort it out. There, well, no. He's like, oh, I'm just going to move my feet. There we go. Now we're going to come back here and do it this way. He moved a little bit. Now let's take a little more. A little more. There it is. Okay. Just going to remind him that all these signals, remember they used to mean something. And now they mean something again. So now what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to rock him back a little bit. Once he gives me his nose, he's got to give me his nose. There we go. No, no. I'm not doing that until I get the nose. We're just reminding him. He's not light. He's coming his head down, but he's fighting it. He's like, I don't want to do what I'm supposed to do. There we go. Now we'll back up. Now we'll bring his front end around. He's resisting me. There we go. There we go. There he remembered he can do something. There he's bringing his nose around on just the neck rein. I'm not having to bump him. There he comes around just the neck rein. I'm not having to bump him. Nose. Nope. No, we don't back up until I get the nose first. Give me the nose. Nope. Alright, I'll 
take that. I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you. There. He's better. All right? So we just keep doing this, and we'll ride him, and we'll take him out riding, and we'll come in, and we'll do this again in another day or two, and then we'll take him out riding, and then he'll be... Because they don't want conflict. They think they want conflict, but they don't want conflict. And so you just calmly keep working on them, and you're like, look, if you follow the path, follow the path, grasshopper. <laughs> Become one with the rider, grasshopper. <laughs> Life will be so much easier, grasshopper. And they'll figure it out if you give them the opportunity. If you give them the signals, super simple, super clear, then they'll figure out that that's their best interest. But what you have to do is you have to make what you want become their best interest and then patiently show them that. Okay? All right. So we're going to stop there. Long video, um, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. We'll catch you guys next time.